Anxiety. So, let us hear about yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about you, yourself? Sure. Um, so, as you mentioned, I'm an artist as well. I work primarily in sculpture and painting, and I do some installation work, um, which has been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy my studio practice, and uh, I love exhibiting my work. Nice. Uh, outside of art, uh, I am a public school inclusion specialist mm -hmm. um, for a early childhood school in Roxbury, um, which is also a lot of fun, but a lot of work at the same time. Uh, I can imagine, <laughs> very challenging, but very rewarding. Correct, yes, That's yeah. Okay. And then I've been president of the gallery here since 2016. Wow. Can you tell me about that experience? Can you tell us a little bit on your journey of getting a job? Like, what made you want to be here? Um, so, when I was first uh, moving to this area, they were putting on their 40th year uh, celebration show. So the gallery has been around for um, going on 50 years, which is pretty incredible. Um, and during that, I helped kind of install and got to know some of the people in the community, and I really enjoyed the experience. Um, and I think they enjoyed working with me because <laughs> the next month they asked if I wanted to to um, be elected the president of the gallery, and I graciously accepted. And, been working hard to further develop this gallery since then. You're so. doing a great job. You, you really are. I have seen improvements since I've been here in 2018, and it's just been leaps and bounds. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and um, can you tell the people um, how would they go about if they wanted to rent the gallery and display their art, or if they have any function? Can you tell the people how they? Can you come and what is the process? Of course, yeah. So our gallery is always free to the general public. Our hours are Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays are open. Um, if artists are interested in showing their work here, we have a, uh, a online submission form. We're looking to fill uh, 18 slots for the 2024 calendar year. Um, so we're asking people to apply on our website, include some images, a description of their work, and then the other big thing is we're really looking to show the diversity of Boston. Uh, I think being a nonprofit art gallery, we have a lot of flexibility to work with a diverse population. Uh, and showing work and, and selecting work on an equitable protocol that we're developing is kind of our, our next goal here. So we're really showing um, what Boston really has to offer in terms of cre creativity. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited. Me I'm too. so excited. And um, can you tell us, um, since you did say you 40 years coming up, right? Or this year's the 40th year? Oh, we're going up 50 soon. So. Okay, oh my God. 50th <laughs> year, all right. Can you tell us a little bit on the history of you guys? I keep looking at that beautiful piano over there. But can you tell us a little bit of history of maybe we can hear a little bit about that? Sure. Okay. Um, so this building that we're in, the Piano Craft Guild, was um, originally built in the late 1850s, early 1860s, and it was a piano manufacturing mm -hmm. um, facility. So um, they would build um, these pianos here. Um, this is one that was made in the building in the mid-1860s, so a little bit earlier um, in their production. Um, and the piano factory here operated for about Let's see, 60 years, and then um, they closed, and the building sat vacant for a while. And in the 70s, um, an architect bought the the building from the city, mm -hmm. uh, and developed it all into artist housing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how kind of the creativity came into the building. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that was having an exhibition space. There used to be a theater in the back for plays and performances. 
Um, and the gallery space used to be in the main entrance of the building. And okay. then uh, about 10 years ago, it was more developed and, and, and placed in its current location. Oh, so, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Thank you for giving me some history to tell you the truth. Now, one thing, I have done shows. This is my home. This is also the Zai's first home. And I want to thank you for trusting in me and believing in our soul anxiety to give us a chance back then when I didn't know what I was going to do. I just always knew um, I wanted to hang my heart in here. I used to come in here and hang out. And when my niece, she's no longer here with us. And I said, one day, one day we're going to be in that building. And I can't believe right now that I'm here. Love you, Sandra. You know, that I'm here today with you. And celebrating this moment in time that you know manifested and dreams do come true. Just don't give up, don't give up on me. But I want to ask you since I have been doing the shows, I met some of the interesting people here. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about um, the format? Uh, because everybody, I met a puppeteer, mm -hmm. I met a sculptor, I, I, it's always somebody fascinating like me that comes to my show. So can you tell me if that, since you said from the history, have a lot of people been around here for a long time, or then it's the application to get in, because this is just about the people, because mm -hmm. I have not met one that is not fascinated and that's definitely into art. So was that a, a formality that you have to be into some type of art to live here? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so historically it had been that you had to be some sort of creative to live here, whether it be an artist, a musician, um, working in theater, or something along those lines. Okay. Um, what happened was those people were here and they were on uh, income restricted rent, uh, subsidized by the city of Boston. Okay. Uh, when the owner of the building paid off their mortgage to um, the city on the property, that's when a lot of artists were asked to leave at that time, and and oh, units no. became much more market rate. So there are still some people in the building that are here, original tenants, uh, but a lot have since moved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the kind of story of Boston is that gentrification. Well, you know, we can't make it. It's, it's the thing. It's so funny to me, you guys. And maybe I shouldn't say. Um, how back they had a vote for the state, and that was the year they made marijuana legal and the rent control they did not pass. Mm -hmm. They said it was one vote from pack. Do you believe that? <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay. I, I know that Mayor Wu now is working again with the idea of rent control, and I want to say it's something along the lines of no rent can be increased more than eight to ten percent. Okay. each calendar year, but even a 10% increase is That's a lot still, for a lot of people, so. Yeah, it's sad. You know, I, I just had my son move to Florida, mm -hmm. and it reads like, mommy, I can't take the rent, you know. He moved from Boston to the to Bahamas, and this for a little bit cheaper, mm -hmm. but it still was taking more space. And yeah. It's like, I got to drive all the way to my job, so the rent is a problem here, and, and it's steady going up, and I look at my son's not here because the rent is so mm -hmm. high and it's sad. It's yeah, sad. yeah it's, it's a shame when families have to make those decisions just because it's so costly to live here. Mm -hmm. so. and, and it's a beautiful place to live. Mm -hmm. I love Boston, I love Massachusetts, but I'm telling you, they've been pushing me out the door. Yeah. You know, but as long as I'm here, we're going to keep on keep doing the thing. I told the Zaddy workshop, okay? All right. <laughs> and I want to ask you, you are an artist, a wonderful artist. When I see these pieces of your work, I was amazed. So can you explain a little bit? Can you tell us which piece you did first? Sure. Um, so the larger one was created a little bit earlier. Uh, this is kind of exemplifying a series I'm working on right now. Uh, I'm kind of exploring the idea of um, escaping kind of everyday life and, and the trauma that society really places on individuals. Yes. Uh, so I, I am envisioning going into um, the protective qualities of nature. So I'm doing a lot of work with the themes of caves right now. It's just kind of a, a natural form that you can kind of go into. Uh, I'm working with ideas of like 
marshlands, because they're very intraversible, they're hard to walk and navigate in. So again, landscape surrounding and protecting. Um, and then the sculptures are kind of coming out of, um, they're I'm envi envisioning them as um, the earth forms that I find while I'm retreating into nature. So I'm, I'm finding ma more magic than our, our everyday fast-paced society allows us to see. Oh my goodness, that is, I have goosebumps when I just tell the story of being there, look at it, and uh, I see the picture. The picture, I see the picture. And it's just beautiful. You make this, and then you said, hey, can we make baby pieces? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my next phase is I want to make very, uh, very tall uh, floor pieces, very similarly. So things mm -hmm. that are kind of similar scale to the body. Mm, that is beautiful. Hey, you guys, tell everybody where they can with a nice piece of artwork, and you know, these are beautiful artists, as you can see, but help Yeah, so um, you can find my work online, I'm on Instagram, it's just my name, Eric Rao, and then also uh, I have a website, uh, ericrao.com, and chances are if you stop by here, you'll run into me and have a nice conversation as well. Absolutely, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Eric, okay, with a candy. <laughs> a couple of maybe personal like questions but how do you deal with anxiety or do you even feel anxiety i don't want to project that world to you but i know a lot of those artists we uh tune in they kind of come back with artists you know mm -hmm. tell me how do you deal with day-to-day -day anxiety so unfortunately anxiety has been a huge huge problem in my life um ever since i was you know I remember in school, fifth grade, the teacher I had really placed that anxiety in me, and it, it's been hard to relieve since. Um, ways I protect myself from it, routine, structure, um, schedules, those are all things that, you know, that are manifesting the anxiety, but they're things that relieve, you know, the unknown, the, the um, so those sorts of things. Um, a big thing that I found that has helped tremendously has been acupuncture. Really? So I go every other week um, for treatment. Yeah. And it really, really. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You nice. leave um, your session just feeling like everything's left the body. Wow. So you it's been a really powerful tool. Up, that brings. I'm sorry to cut you off. That brings up a powerful question, and I want to ask you how do you feel about it. Um, medicine versus like things like acupuncture, things like you know or salt baths. Yeah, I heard of them, like the salt baths you can go mm -hmm. and it just you know takes out all the mess with the anxieties. I haven't tried it but I'm looking to try it. Maybe we could go together. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think trying to find more holistic approaches to target what might be your ailment first before going the medical route, like in terms of prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. I think that pres prescription drugs are a great tool for people who who require them. I also I think it, they it, using them as more of like a final resort as opposed to just the thing you go to immediately. Absolutely. Um, I found I think exercise is a really good way to relieve a lot of anxiety. So oh, okay. tie yourself out so you can't worry. Yeah, you know? that's right. <laughs> Concentrate on it. And you spoke on it briefly um, about people embedding anxiety on you. You know, sometimes, and people be careful for that because a lot of times you can be injecting your anxieties onto the next person. Mm -hmm. And when it's a child, that's just not fair, you know, because kids come into this world, you know, just happy and free. A lot of things are put up by orphan society. Mm -hmm. A lot of things start right at school. Um, mine started in the home, you know. Uh, I never seen a fight. I'm raised in Greensboro, Georgia, so at my parents, it's not I never going on down there. Mm -hmm. I come back to Boston with my mom. My dad's fighting my mom. So I'm addicted um being raised in the house with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from talking about just a little tip of it where it began, where I sometimes we always have to go back and kind of remember where it is uh, just like you said, you know, in school, a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. I remember at the 
the whole river with my parents, you know. So just try to be careful, whether you're a parent, or whether you're a teacher, be easy on the children, be easy on adults. You don't judge people, you don't go around telling them, but making them feel bad to make you feel good. That's not good, you know, because people with anxiety, we need to be treated with love, patience, and care. Am I correct? Absolutely, yeah. All right, I feel the same way. Do you have um, any family members? Because I have my brother who suffered from bipolar, and you know, I look at it sometimes and I say, you know, I feel sorry, but I have to try to tell him to stay on this medicine for get on the regimen. He's that exercise. I'm going to tell him about the acupuncture. Yeah, and then you try that. So, do you have anybody else in your family, or is it just you that you know, not just because me and my brother identify with talk? Mm -hmm. We have someone in the family that identifies with you with anxiety. I think people in my family, everyone has their own battles, you know. Okay. So okay. It, 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 it's similar in some ways and different in others, and I, I don't think that's atypical. I think most families you talk to, yes. their struggles, you know. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. I have found one in life that doesn't have yeah. any, you know, as long as the love's getting, that's all that matters. Exactly, right? yeah. Well, it's been really nice talking to you, Eric. Um, I would love to take a tour around and we can show the people what artwork is up your hand right now, and you would just explain, and we're going to cut right now. Okay, I just want to say thank you to Eric for coming out today and sharing all his wisdom and how he deals with his anxiety with doing his beautiful artwork. Um, you guys check him out on the website and if you do want to come down and hang out some art, feel free. Like we said, go to the website, fill out the application, submit the photos, and then they'll take it from there. So I just want to thank you so much for coming out with me Absolutely. today. Absolutely. You know I gotta get a hug. Absolutely. And I want to thank you as well because you know, we've been working together for a couple of years now and, and the programming that you're doing here is really valuable and I really see you as one of our tightest community partners right now. So it's always a pleasure having you in this space. So. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I Absolutely. love you. Okay. Love you too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Stay good. Okay, let's say bye to the camera. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah.